Welcome, brave souls, to our scary stories. In this haven of horror, we unearth tales so chilling they'd freeze the marrow in your bones. Tonight, gather round, for we are about to plunge into an abyss of terror and torment. Prepare yourselves, for once you enter the haunting realm of Westwick Woods, there may be no return. Dim the light and let the darkness embrace you. The village of Dornstadt was the kind of place where time seemed to stretch languidly, its tendrils wrapping around every cobblestone, cottage, and child's laughter. It was like a watercolor painting, dipped in hues of amber, crimson, and olive green, capturing the essence of a bygone era. Lena's boots made gentle, rhythmic thuds as she walked through the streets. A light fog clung to the ground, caressing her ankles, the chilly embrace a stark contrast to the warmth of the midday sun. Birds twittered from unseen perches, their songs an airy backdrop to the village's slow heartbeat. Yet as harmonious as the place seemed, an invisible line marked where the houses ended and the foreboding Westwick woods began. Those woods, with their thick canopy, swallowed light and echoed back whispers of the unknown. Are you lost? A voice broke her train of thought. Lena turned to find an elderly woman with a woven basket on her arm, her gray eyes assessing Lena with a mixture of curiosity and caution. No, Lena replied, brushing a strand of auburn hair from her face. I'm here to study the legends of Dornstadt, especially those related to Westwick Woods. The old woman's face darkened, as if Lena had uttered a forbidden spell. My name's Helga, she said, her tone cautious. You'd do well to avoid those woods. They're not kind to outsiders, or even locals, for that matter. Lena, feeling a blend of excitement and determination, tilted her chin up. I've studied legends from around the world. I'm sure Dornstadt has its own tales, but I'm here to uncover the truth. Helga leaned in closer, the scent of lavender and rosemary wafting from her. Truth, she whispered, is often more terrifying than fiction. By sunset, make sure you're far from Westwick's edge. With those parting words, Helga moved along, leaving Lena both intrigued and slightly unnerved. The latter emotion grew stronger as Lena wandered closer to the forest. The cheerful chirping of the birds lessened, replaced by a silence so profound it felt oppressive. The entrance to the woods, framed by gnarly trees, beckoned her forward. She chose a spot nearby to set up her camp. As she hammered pegs into the soft earth and erected her tent, the forest seemed to watch. Every rustle of the leaves, every distant animal sound, felt like a hushed conversation she wasn't privy to. Night approached rapidly, the sky painting itself in deep purples and navy blues. The village lights twinkled like distant stars, while the boundary to Westwick Woods loomed, an abyss of shadows. The fire Lena kindled was the only barrier between her and the chilling blackness. As she settled into her sleeping bag, notebook in hand, a distant sound pricked her ears. A soft, melodic whisper like a lullaby carried by the wind. Drawing her coat tighter, Lena penned her first note. The legends might be true. The woods do whisper. Nearby, a crow cawed, its voice a sharp warning. But for Lena, the allure of the unknown was too strong. With the fire's flickering glow as her guardian, she eagerly awaited what the night and Westwick Woods would unveil. Morning broke, casting gentle streams of golden light onto Lena's campsite. The hushed whispers that had teased her ear the previous night now seemed like a distant dream. She packed a satchel with essentials and, with a deep breath, stepped into Westwick Woods. The atmosphere inside was unlike any forest Lena had previously explored. It was as if the trees held memories, stretching back countless years, standing tall as silent sentinels guarding a world of secrets. The ground was covered with a thick layer of moss, each step Lena took producing a soft, cushioned sound, muffled and eerily muted. The air was thick with the fragrance of pine and wet earth, intermingled with an occasional hint of something sweet, like overripe fruit left in the sun. As she ventured deeper, she noticed that the tree's bark bore strange markings. On closer inspection, they weren't natural scars or patterns, but deliberate carvings, symbols that spoke of an ancient language, forgotten by time but deeply etched in the heart of the woods. Lena felt a sense of unease. It was clear these markings were not the work of mere vandals, but of a people who had once been part of the forest's narrative. Continuing on, the whispers returned. Soft, lilting, a siren song guiding her deeper into the woods. Curiosity driving her forward, she let the sound lead her, growing louder with every step until it led her to a small clearing. The sun seemed reluctant to touch this place, casting a silvery light that gave the clearing an otherworldly glow. 
In the center lay a solitary grave, its headstone weathered and worn but still standing defiant against time's onslaught. Engraved on it was an epitaph that sent a shiver down Lena's spine. Here lies Gertrude, love's lament lost to shadows. The trade in passion, bound in sorrow. Seek not her tale, lest you wish to follow. This was no ordinary grave. Lena knelt beside it, tracing her fingers over the letters, feeling the weight of a story that Westwick Woods cradled in its depths. The whispers now had a name, a soul. Gertrude, the very earth seemed to mourn her, and in that moment, Lena felt an overpowering connection to the spirit of the woods, an unspoken promise to unravel the story that had remained silenced for too long. Behind her, a rustle among the trees hinted that Lena wasn't alone. A fleeting shadow, a hushed conversation between the leaves. They all bore witness to her discovery. The woods seemed to tighten around her, the atmosphere growing heavier, laden with anticipation. And so, with Gertrude's grave as the backdrop, Lena began her quest to unearth the tale of love and betrayal that had bound a soul to Westwick Woods. But as the old saying goes, some stories are best left untold, a lesson Lena was about to learn the hard way. The dense foliage of Westwick Woods seemed to close in around Lena as she journeyed onward, drawn by an insatiable curiosity. The once clear pathways twisted and turned, becoming a maze of indistinguishable trails. The confident stride with which Lena had begun her exploration began to falter, replaced by a growing sense of unease. Sunlight, which had earlier bathed the forest floor, grew scarce, making way for twilight's gray embrace. Each tree, with its gnarled roots and ancient markings, became an eerie silhouette against the waning light. The murmurs she had heard earlier now took on a more pronounced tone. The wind carried fragmented whispers, always just out of reach, always urging her further into the forest's heart. Her throat parched and legs weary, Lena realized the depth of her predicament. Lost within the labyrinthine woods, Nike's descent was imminent. Panic's icy fingers threatened to grip her, but she took a steadying breath and tried to retrace her steps. A voice, soft and melancholic, seemed to dance on the wind. It was neither distinct nor clear, but felt more like a memory than a sound. It carried with it an undertone of sadness and yearning. Reveal your secrets, Lena whispered, the weight of desperation making her voice quiver. Show me the story of Westwick. No sooner had the words left her lips than she stumbled upon a curious sight. Half buried under a blanket of decaying leaves was an old leather-bound journal. Intricate designs adorned its cover, and its pages, though yellowed with age, held inked words written with careful precision. Sitting on the forest floor, Lena began to read. The journal chronicled the torrid love affair of Gertrude and Lawrence. Young, passionate, and headstrong, the two were deeply entwined in a love that defied convention. However, as the pages unfolded, a tale of deceit began to emerge. Lawrence, bound by societal norms and familial pressures, had betrayed Gertrude's trust. While professing love in the moonlit shadows of Westwick Woods, he had been engaged to another in Dornstadt. Each entry was an outpouring of Gertrude's raw emotions, from the dizzying highs of love to the gut-wrenching despair of betrayal. As Lena read, the atmosphere of the woods seemed to shift, resonating with the emotions penned down ages ago. The trees swayed mournfully, and the wind carried the scent of tears long shed. Suddenly, a gust rustled the pages, bringing Lena's attention to a particular entry. Written with a trembling hand, it read, Lawrence of Dornstadt, with your lineage and your descendants, you shall remember our love, our pain. My spirit, bound to these woods, will be a reminder of the promises broken and the love betrayed. Lena's heart raced. The implications of what she had just read were clear. Lawrence, a forefather of Dornstadt, had played a crucial role in Gertrude's fate. The village's very history was steeped in this tale of passion and treachery. As the weight of this revelation settled in, Lena knew that she had inadvertently intertwined her own fate with Westwick's long-held secret. The whispers grew louder, wrapping around her, becoming both a comfort and a forewarning of the journey ahead. Lena's fingers gingerly turned the pages of the journal, each word pulling her deeper into Gertrude's soul. As she read, the forest around her began to transform. Shadows deepened, and the crisp night air grew heavy with emotion. Every rustle of the leaves, every sigh of the wind, became intertwined with the vivid tale unfolding before her. A soft glow began to emanate from the trees. The previously indistinct forest now played host to shimmering, ghostly images, vividly playing out scenes from Gertrude's past. 
Lena watched, transfixed, as the memories danced before her eyes. She saw Gertrude, her fiery red hair cascading down her back, her green eyes filled with the depth of her emotions. Her laughter echoed through the woods, enchanting and free-spirited. By her side was Lawrence, his features softening in her presence, lost in the intoxicating world they had created together. They met in secret, amidst the trees, away from prying eyes. Their stolen moments were filled with whispered promises and shared dreams. Their love was wild, untamed, and fierce. However, as time wore on, Lita noticed a change in Lawrence. His brow furrowed more often, and his eyes, once filled with passion, now held a flicker of fear. As the memories unfolded, Lena witnessed Lawrence's growing apprehension towards Gertrude's innate abilities. Her connection to nature, her ability to communicate with the very essence of the forest, had initially fascinated him. But as the village's murmurs grew louder, labeling her a witch, Lawrence's affection became tainted with dread. The forest laid bare the turning point for Lena, Lawrence, torn between love and societal expectations, leading an angry mob towards their secret meeting place. The air grew cold as the scene played out, Gertrude's pleas, her desperate cries for understanding, and Lawrence's anguished face as he condemned the love of his life. The culmination of the tragedy unfurled before Lena's eyes. The villagers, their faces contorted with fear and hatred, chanted incantations to bind Gertrude's spirit to the woods. With every uttered word, Lena felt the agony that ripped through Gertrude, her essence being woven into the trees, her consciousness imprisoned within the very forest she loved. A haunting finale showcased Gertrude's transformation, her form dissolving into the woods, her spirit echoing in every rustling leaf, whispering wind, and gnarled branch. As the last memory faded, Lena found herself back amidst the silent trees, the weight of centuries of sorrow pressing down on her. The connection she felt to Gertrude was no mere coincidence. She had been chosen to bear witness to this tale, to feel the anguish and heartbreak that had shaped Westwick Woods. With newfound determination, Lena clutched the journal close to her chest. The forest had unveiled its tragic past. Now, it was up to her to ensure that Gertrude's story did not remain buried within the confines of Westwick Woods. The darkened canopy seemed to thicken with Lena's every step, each shadow a silent witness to the tale that had unraveled. The whispers of the woods were no longer a distant hum. They were now personal, pressing in on her from every direction. Every leaf, every tree, bore the soul of a woman who had loved deeply and had been deeply betrayed. Lena's introspection was interrupted by the creaking of a branch. Emerging from the tree line was an old man. His frame was slight, but his gaze was sharp, filled with a wisdom that seemed out of place in his fragile form. His deep-set blue eyes watched Lena intently. You've seen her, haven't you? He asked, his voice a raspy whisper, yet carrying an unmistakable authority. Lena, taken aback, nodded cautiously. Who are you? She questioned. Heinrich, he replied, stepping closer. The moonlight caught the contours of his face, revealing lines etched deep from years of strain and concern. The woods have been restless since your arrival. I knew it would only be a matter of time before Gertrude reached out. Lena clutched the journal protectively. You know about this, she asked, pointing to the leather-bound book. Heinrich sighed heavily. Ah, that accursed journal. Yes, I know of it. It's been in my family for generations, always resurfacing always binding another soul to her mournful tale. Confused, Lena probed further. Your family. Heinrich hesitated, then spoke with a heaviness laden with guilt. I am a direct descendant of Lawrence. This curse, this connection to the forest, it's my legacy. The revelation stunned Lena. Here, before her, stood a living link to the tragic tale she had been ensnared in. Why did you let me find this journal? She accused. It wasn't by design, Heinrich admitted, regret evident in his eyes. I've tried to protect others from it, but the forest has its ways. The journal seeks out those whom the forest believes can help. And what does it want from me? Lena's voice trembled slightly. To free Gertrude, and in turn, free yourself, Heinrich answered. The journal binds its reader to her fate. Unless the original spell is reversed, you will become yet another echo in these woods. Lena swallowed hard. How do we reverse it? Heinrich paused. It won't be easy. The curse is fueled by betrayal, and to break it, an act of true love and sacrifice is needed. 
But we have to hurry. The woods are impatient, and every moment you remain bound draws you closer to becoming a permanent part of Westwick's haunting chorus. The dim, early morning light barely penetrated the dense canopy of Westwick Woods. Every tree seemed to stand taller, casting longer, more menacing shadows. The air was dense, every breath Lena took was laden with the weight of centuries of sorrow. Heinrich led the way, his lantern casting an amber hue onto old, worn-out pages from his family's archives. The solution lies in the past, he murmured, as he carefully laid out an array of ancient scrolls and texts. Each document was a testament to the deep, intricate connection between the Dornstadt lineage and the tormented woods. Lena felt Gertrude's emotions surging within her, pain, betrayal, and a thirst for vindication. We need to hurry, Heinrich. The forest, it's consuming me. Heinrich nodded, understanding the urgency. Here, he said, pointing to a faded drawing on one of the scrolls. It depicted a ritualistic circle surrounded by symbols and runes, and at its center, a heart encased in thorns. We must recreate this, Heinrich stated. It's a ceremony of release. The heart represents Gertrude's bound spirit, and the thorns symbolize the betrayal that entrapped her. To free her, we must physically and symbolically break these barriers. As they began to gather the materials, Lena felt the forest's resistance. The whispers grew louder, a cacophony of voices trying to drown out her own thoughts. The ground beneath her became soft and spongy, attempting to pull her down with every step. Trees seemed to bend and reach out, their branches tangling in her hair and tearing at her clothes. Pushing forward, Lena and Heinrich found a clearing and began to draw the circle, carefully placing candles at specific points and inscribing the runes with a mixture of ash and salt. Heinrich handed Lena a small, silver dagger. This belonged to Lawrence, he said. It's a symbol of the betrayal. We'll use it to sever the thorns around Gertrude's heart. Lena's hand trembled as she held the cold metal. The weight of responsibility bore down on her. With every etched symbol, she could feel Gertrude's anticipation, the hope of a spirit yearning for freedom. As the final preparations were made, the entire forest seemed to hold its breath. Lena, standing at the center of the ritualistic circle, felt the culmination of Gertrude's pain and her own determination. With a deep breath, she began chanting the ancient words Heinrich had taught her. The atmosphere crackled with energy. The candles flared up, casting eerie dancing shadows. The ground vibrated softly, resonating with the pulse of a heart, Gertrude's heart. Heinrich joined in the chanting, his voice harmonizing with Lena's, amplifying the energy. As the ritual reached its peak, Lena took the dagger and symbolically cut through the air in the center of the circle. The reaction was immediate. A scream, both of agony and relief, echoed throughout the woods. The oppressive weight lifted. The dark shadows retreated, replaced by a soft, gentle light filtering through the trees. As the light settled, Lena felt a deep exhaustion envelop her, and she collapsed. Heinrich, his own strength sapped, rushed to her side. The ritual had been completed, but at what cost? Westwick Woods seemed to breathe again, the malevolent grip loosened. But Lena and Heinrich, intertwined in the narrative of a tragic past, still had a journey ahead. The redemption of Westwick was just the beginning. The darkening sky painted the horizon in hues of deep purples and reds as Lena and Heinrich stood in the heart of Westwick Woods. The forest was no longer the serene veil of green it once appeared to be. Instead, it pulsed with a restless energy, every rustling leaf and every whispering breeze hinting at the awakening storm. Lena, deep in concentration, began her chant, her voice cutting through the eerie silence. As she invoked the ancient verses, the forest responded. Trees began to contort, their bark groaning in protest. Shadows, devoid of any light source, swayed and pranced around the clearing, painting nightmarish patterns on the ground. The whispers that had been Lena's constant companion now swelled into a roaring cacophony of voices, all echoing Gertrude's pain, anger, and desire for retribution. It was deafening, drowning out every other sound. And then, amidst this tempest of sound and fury, a new voice emerged, chilling in its clarity. The trail, it screamed. From the ground, a ghostly apparition began to take form. Transparent yet undeniably present, it was Gertrude. Her ethereal figure glowed a haunting blue, her eyes burning with an inner fire. Her gaze fixed upon Lena, who stood frozen, her chant interrupted by the terrifying sight. You, Gertrude's voice thundered, filled with centuries of rage. You who dare invoke me. 
you who bears the face of those who damned me. Lena, realizing that Gertrude saw not her, but the faces of the villagers who had wronged her, tried to speak, to reason. I am here to free you, Gertrude, not to harm you. But Gertrude's fury was insatiable. Every ounce of her spectral being was focused on Lena, who she perceived as a representation of her tormentors. Heinrich, witnessing the intense confrontation and feeling the weight of his family's treachery, stepped forward. Gertrude, he shouted, drawing her attention. It's me you want. Lawrence's blood runs in my veins. Take me and release her. The ghostly figure hesitated for a moment, her burning gaze shifting between Lena and Heinrich. The very atmosphere seemed to hold its breath in anticipation. With a swift motion, Gertrude lunged at Heinrich, the air around him turning icy cold. Their figures merged, an agonizing scream echoing throughout the woods. Heinrich's form crumpled to the ground, his sacrifice evident. The woods, as if respecting this act of redemption, grew silent. The once twisting trees returned to their majestic stance, and the shadows receded. Gertrude's spirit, perhaps finding solace in Heinrich's sacrifice, began to fade, leaving behind a serene tranquility. Lena, tears streaming down her face, knelt beside Heinrich, his lifeless eyes staring up at the canopy. In his noble attempt to right the wrongs of his ancestors, he had become Westwick Wood's final victim. Dawn's light broke the horizon, casting ethereal blows on the clearing where just hours before, a fateful confrontation had taken place. Where two spirits, Gertrude and Heinrich, had been moments ago, now lay an empty expanse, as if the earth itself had embraced them. Lena stood alone, the weight of the night's events pressing heavily upon her. Her heart ached for Heinrich, his sacrifice forever etched in her memory. Yet, even as the sun began its ascent, Lena felt a change within her. The same whispers that had beckoned her into the forest now echoed within her very being. Her gaze, once filled with academic curiosity, now held a distant, almost ethereal quality. Every rustle of the leaves, every bird's song, every fleeting shadow resonated with her in ways she had never imagined. As hours turned into days, Lena's attempts to leave the woods were futile. Invisible barriers seemed to push her back, and the farther she ventured from the forest's heart, the weaker and more disoriented she became. It soon dawned upon her, she was now irrevocably linked to Westwick Woods. Years rolled by, and the village of Dornstadt saw fewer visitors, but tales of the haunted woods persisted. Children would be warned not to venture too deep into the forest, especially at dusk, for they might hear the sorrowful whispers of the professor who knew too much. Lena's once physical presence gradually dissipated, but her essence remained. If one listened closely, beneath the chorus of nature, they might discern a soft voice, singing mournful lullabies, recounting tales of love, betrayal, and sacrifice. The stories varied, but the message remained the same. Westwick Woods held secrets that demanded respect and reverence. And so, amidst the evergreen canopy and the age-old trunks, Lena's spirit became interwoven with the very fabric of the forest. The once vibrant professor from the city was now but a haunting memory, the newest guardian of Westwick, the whisperer among the trees whose songs of sorrow echoed for eternity. As the veil between our world and Westwick Woods draws to a close, remember, dear listener, some tales are better left whispered among the trees. Sleep with one eye open tonight, for who knows what shadows may find you. Until our next chilling tale, keep the lights close, and the stories closer. This is our Scary Stories signing off for tonight.